Good evening all. Ira Epstein with your financial market wrap up for this Tuesday and we're at February 9th, 2021, about 6.15 p.m. Central Time. Hey, 26 states, getting cold enough for you? I know we're freezing in Chicago. I have snow on my uh, front uh, that I'm supposed to go out and get and I, I played uh, hooky on it all day. I mean, it's cold. I think it was five degrees. That's without wind chills and at night it's getting under zero. I'll wait. Tomorrow I'll be a braver candidate for that. As you can see uh, in the follow through tonight as we're already into the Wednesday session, a higher uh, markets right now, down a little bit in the Russell. Gold market pretty close to steady. Silver down about nine cents. Copper market over the 370 level, fairly impressive. I'm waiting to see what the dollar does. If the dollar gets under 90.33 and a half, I think this swing to the upside has then run its course. So we'll find out if I'm right or wrong on that. I looked at the API numbers. I'm just not super bullish them. I'm having a hard time with everybody that's this bullish and driving a market to six days in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. I've seen this before, you know, and it's a sign of strength, not weakness. Uh, and I get it, but, you know, trying to buy after that big of a rally, I'll let somebody else do it. Bonds and notes, as I look at them, and by the way, that's something that you have to learn. I think you have to learn when you don't like the risk in a market, doesn't matter what the chart says, you walk away from it. Because you'll really be upset with yourself if you did something just because the chart action said, oh, this is good, and another part of you is saying, you know, I really don't want to be involved in that market. Being not involved is a lot different than saying, I want to be short, market charts action saying to be long. Very different. Bonds and notes, as you can see, pretty much uh, sideways action today. You know, the impeachment's going to con uh, continue tomorrow at noon central time. We'll get into whatever it is. I'm already hearing President uh, Trump is very unhappy with how uh, the opening speeches went. If I were him, I would be too. They were not good in any manner whatsoever. Uh, the House, the vote, from what I've seen, not in the House, but the Senate, is not enough if this were the vote to uh, find him guilty. So that's the good news, as bad as uh, he didn't like what's going on, and I'll bet you read about that. In the S&P 500, as we take a look, this market is up and over the 18-week average, and it has been since basically the end of October, beginning of November. That's just been a sign, continual sign of upside bias. Where are we now? Well, you can see how the market's trying to just move away from here straight up. Where would you put a stop in this market is something that you have to ask yourself. For me, I can see it back down here. And with the market at 3908, that type of risk tolerance, I don't have. I admit I don't have it, don't want to have it. Not looking to risk thousands of dollars to make, I don't know what, but I'll wait. There'll be opportunities. This is like a how do I explain trading? It's like a, uh, a schedule of jets, planes, trains, buses. There's always another one coming, folks. May not be the one of the city you want to go to, another one's coming, so you hop on it and you figure out where you're going. Well, trading's sort of like that. You don't like this trade? What the heck? Why do you have to trade the S&P? You can look for markets you like. I still see this market uh, has got the higher high, lower and low. I don't like that. It's over the 18-day average, so the bias is up in the market. We are skirting the upper Bollinger Band, and we back away. Did we hit it? Well, if you take a look here, you did not. You uh, Let me take that back. 39, what is it, 11 and a quarter was the high here. And as you can see, the Bollinger Band's 39.13. So you did not hit it there and you still haven't hit it. Doesn't mean you have to, but you're in that zone. Just pay attention to that and remember the size of the rally. And remember, are you gonna embed? You're not there yet. You're gonna say, what? Watch this. You cannot count Wednesday because we don't know where it's gonna finish in the market. So we go to Tuesday's action, both numbers certainly over 80, and they were over 80 on Monday, not on Friday. Therefore, we need to have this market have a good close 
whatever that might mean tomorrow, to keep these embedded readings up. They're both over 90, so it would take a hard break to not have that occur. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'd like the market not to hit the Bollinger Band and back off here and offer some opportunities maybe to get into the market. There are, there's a way to do it if you get an embedded reading. I talk about that in my morning subscriber video. In the NASDAQ, are we trying to embed? Again, you cannot count tonight, so we throw it out. We don't know what it's gonna do. We know that on Tuesday, right here, both numbers over 80, on Monday, both over 80, and on Friday, let's come on, they were not. Same identical situation. I'm not gonna do that on each chart, but here you have a different picture. You've got higher lows, higher highs. We need tomorrow to know if the market's going to embed. When markets embed until that embedded reading is lost, the pattern shifts to one of looking to buy the market on breaks until that red line closes under 80, looking for prices to get up to the closest of or a window envelope, a Bollinger Band, one of the events up there. I don't show window envelopes on here. Be too many lines for you. When I look at the Dow, no, it's not in the category of the other two, of the NASDAQ and the S&P. It's just overbought. Can go up higher, no question about it. They're all making new contract highs, but we're talking opportunities to enter based on a series of events. None of us are blind. We see these markets are in uptrends and making highs. The question is how to get involved in them. That's what we're discussing here. And in the Russell, I had somebody write and say it's day after day and week after week of being over the Bollinger Band. I don't know what he's looking at, but it's not. You know, you've got the, what, one, two, three, four. Maybe today will be the fifth day. It's rare that you get there. You're not embedded either. I wait on all of them. In the VIX, notice how this VIX is just hanging here, refuses to break through this area, which I, I even saw today uh, a number of people on CNBC discussing that. Now, I think it was Bloomberg, I might be wrong, where in the morning Tom Kern was talking, why aren't we lower in this if this market's this bullish? That was fascinating observation. And that becomes the question. If you take out 2207, it's a problem, it tells you the market doesn't want to get down and embed and drive the market even lower, which is more bullish for the stock market. So I'd just be watching this for that reason. In the bond market, still very much in the bear camp, but as we take a look at the readings here, both numbers are over tonight, 20. Were they over yesterday? No. So you're not embedded. You're oversold leaning here. Who speaks tomorrow? Fed Chair Powell. Do you want to go through that or you want the market to rock and roll a little bit in front of it? I, that's what I think you're going to do. Everybody will be listening to it. It'll be all over the airwaves. So be a bit cautious. That's the words that I'd give you. In the 10-year note, it's the same thing. Oversold, come down. You've got your already your target that you've been to. Be cautious. Oversold conditions either in bed or they correct upwards to correct themselves. I'll be patient and wait. Now here's the dollar index. So. I wasn't too far off. I said, you know, you're fighting at this upper Bollinger Band and with that reversal day, that happened three days ago, by the way. I wanted to show you this. That was a pretty good sign you were going to have problems. I was looking for the top between here and the 100 day anyways, but first time you hit, it's a problem. Then you started losing your momentum on this. The logical spot, maybe you get back to that 18-day average of closes. Now I'm expecting a bit of a battle there. But as I said, if you take out 90, 33 and a half, I think you do a lot of damage to those looking to be bullish the market at this point. It will not have turned the trend down. And I'm getting what I wanted in the euro. I thought it would come back, as you know, from right here. We had talked about it. Major support of the combination of the 100-day average. Bollinger Band with a reversal up. Market not embedding, turning on you, and where does it go? Right to the, what I call that line in the sand, DMZ zone, uh, and just sort of sitting here. But you haven't, you have not changed that the trend is down, the swing line is down, the bias is up, and momentum's pointing higher. Nothing's together right now. Patience. British pound, 
this has been the play against the euro currency, the play against the yen. A lot of traders have been making this play right now. Part of the reason the fundamentals they're giving is that they're so far ahead on their COVID situation. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I'm paying attention to a market that was just at a lower Bollinger Band and just hit its upper Bollinger Band today. And that all happened in what, seven, just over that, uh, four business days? 96 hours? I don't know. I don't generally want to play those type of things. Bitcoin, so 48,895. To the non believers, whoa. And as we know, Tesla, big part of this where they bought coins and people chasing everything in sight. You are overbought, you are not embedded, you are over the upper Bollinger Band, you're getting excessive. How's that for the word? The differential between Brent and WTI. So we had been down here into the 264 area and suddenly the market's climbing back to the resistance of that 18 day average. So are we gonna see a widening of WTI to the, uh, uh, rather Brent to the WTI? Don't know. I did not think today's API numbers were all that good. You lost several million barrels in the crude, which is great, but you put more than that in the gasoline stocks. So I understand they're consuming the crude, building inventory in gasoline, spring will come, they'll use that inventory, I get it. And you're depleting inventory into stellates and heating oil, which makes sense in this cold weather. Uh, and I put together for tonight's report on my full research, which you don't see, you have to be a paid subscriber to that, a bunch of charts from the EIA tonight about future demand for uh, crude oil needs and so on. It's very fascinating. In the Brent, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, six days in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. You get these so rare. The market's on borrowed time. It's gonna move to the right-hand side, but the fact that it's up there doing this does not mean it has to be a big break. That's a sign of strength, not weakness. Now, if you embed the slow stochastic with it, and let's not count tonight, but look, both numbers over 80, both over 80, not over 80 on Friday. So you're looking to see, can you embed tomorrow? It's gonna to take a big break not to embed, but overbought over the Bollinger Band, that's all I have to know. One of my rules when I come out, I'm put together already. I've been writing the rules down uh, for the enhanced version of my um, Bollinger Band course. And uh, I'll probably have to write them through the end of the week and then I start shooting. I began shooting a little today, realized I wanted more rules in there, threw all that away, but I'm hard at work. You're gonna get that enhanced course this week, uh, this, this month could be next week. So I'm far, far along on this first course and I'm having a ball doing it because it keeps me straight on what I'm doing. Uh, WTI, it's the same thing. I'm looking for the pullback, but I think you are embedded in this one. You cannot count today. So you go to Tuesday, both numbers over 80, both over 80 and they were both over 80 on Friday. See, I've got a good memory. Even the gray hair, don't, don't go by that. Got a pretty good memory. Lower low, higher high, moving to the right hand side, still very strong. Heating oil, moving to the right hand side, you get up to the band, you back off, it's back and forth action there. But again, embedded reading, strong. Notice it's not even dropping down to let the bulls in. When you can get in, you may not want to. That's what I've learned when these things happen. All right, last in the nat gas, the market uh, refuses to embed. It's in an overbought configuration. It's still bullish. Higher lows, higher highs. You're looking to see, can you get convergence of the 18-day average in the 100? Now, this weather's supposed to last another week or so, but when they start putting out that instead of this weekend, if it's next weekend, the temperatures are going back in the 30s, Got to be careful. That could be the sign this market wants to give up even more ground. Just a word to the wise as you're all doing that. I want to remind you, you know, when I was putting my course today together, the enhanced uh, Bollinger Band and parts of the slow stochastic course, I went to pivot points and I, I'm mentioning them for a big reason. 
Let's assume that you're losing the embedded reading, bullish or bearish, during the day, and you go, oh boy, I, where, where can I get out? I don't like this. One of the things I'll turn to are my pivot points. Because as they're losing it, I'm looking to see as this is occurring, let's assume that I, I want to come out on rallies. Where's this market? Where are my resistance points intraday that make some sense with uh, the momentum? Because I don't think I'm right and I want to mitigate the loss. And this is what a pivot point looks like. You get your center number, two resistance points above you, two below you. Then I tie it together with the slow stochastic looking for it. So if you think you don't use other tools, you do use them. But the key is, the, uh, the object is to mitigate a problem. Sometimes and other times you're looking for entries just because you've got this bullish signal, all the other points that you're doing aren't coming into play, how do I get involved? I've created a free, let me start with that word, free, three-part series of videos. All you need to do is go to our website, fill out the form that you want those, we send you everything by email. Could it be simpler? It could be, you call my staff and while you're on the phone, they'll send it right to you. That's how you get it that way. I'm Ira, you have a great day, I'll see you tomorrow.